Welcome to Glory Valley Baptist Church. I hope you're uh, blessed this morning and will be blessed by the service. Uh, we hope that the day will come before too long that uh, we'll be able to have a full congregation instead of just a handful who come to support us as we tape this uh, service. But to those that are watching us on the internet or wherever, we want to welcome you and uh, we want to ask you to share the message with those around you. Let them know that we're available to them. And of course, if you want to come on Sunday morning, we have a lot of empty seats there, so you don't have to sit close. And, uh, you can be pretty well uh, uh, protected from the crowds if you like. So, uh, this morning before we start our service, we want to go to the Lord's Prayer and ask His blessings on this service and on the many others that are striving around the country to have service in these track times. Father, we pray as we come to your throne this morning that you would bless each one that is in the sound of our voice, that you might help them, Lord, to walk closer to you and to have more uh, assurance of their salvation and more hope for the future. We pray, Father, for those that are suffering from the effects of the virus and we ask you, Lord, that you lift them up. We have many, Lord, that are uh, sick and many that have lost loved ones. Lord, uh, it is a trying time and we don't understand, but we know that you are in control. We pray, Father, for those in the Gulf Coast who are facing the hurricanes coming in, uh, that you keep them safe and watch over them. And Lord, there's so many wildfires in the West. And, uh, it seems that everywhere you look, there's tragedy. And we pray, Father, that you would help us to deal with it and to realize that Whatever tragedy takes place, you're in charge and we can put our trust in you and be secure. I pray now, Lord, you bless us as we continue this service. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Join. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, y'all happy to be here in this gorgeous Lord's Day. Say amen. 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 Okay. Uh, we're going to sing page 515. Y'all sing loud so I can hear you. Sing loud so I can hear you. Uh, it's called Land That Is Fairer Than Day, but I know we know it is Sweet Vine by. <laughs> Thank you. 
valley. Thank you. 
As you can probably observe, our services are spontaneous and unrehearsed because we never know what's going to happen on a Sunday morning when we come, who is going to be able to be here or what they'll be able to do. So, uh, so. Thank you, Ken Sylvia. Looks like maybe Kathy's going to get ready to do something here in a minute. I don't know what. I know she had some songs picked out. Thank you, Ken Sylvia. That was beautiful. Enjoy that. There she is. 
thing you cough drop on one side, chewing gum on the other. <laughs> Allergies, aren't they lovely? We love them. Like a blind man, 
that it's unreasonable to think that all of this came about accidentally. I can't believe that I'm an accident. I don't believe you're an accident. I don't believe that this world is an accident. I believe that it was built with a purpose by a creator who knew what he was doing when he did it and had the great plans for it and those plans have not changed. God created the heavens and the earth. He sent it out here and he made it as a place for well, for us to dwell on. He committed it into our hands to care for it, to nurture it, to cause it to prosper, and He is dependent upon us to do that job. We have that chore. We are His workmanship created in His image. You know, just because uh, scientists tries to say that in the beginning there was just a law, but it's sort of uh, over the millions and billions or trillions of years. It finally evolved into what it is now. Uh, and the reason they did this is because they can't explain it scientifically. You can't explain the world unless you can say it was billions and trillions of years. Well, it may be. <clears throat> the material that God used to create this earth Probably, he's had all the time. Uh, you know, you can take a forest here and you can cut it down and saw it up and make lumber out of it and build a house. <clears throat> well, God had a stockpile of use of material of some sort, and he took it and he built the heavens and the earth. Now, he didn't have to do it the way we do. He spoke and it happened because his power is unlimited. But in essence, it's the same principle. You don't build a house out of nothing. Certainly you had to have something to build it out of. Well, God took nothing and built the earth. We don't know what he had, what it was. We don't know where the earth came from. And so the material may be billions of years old. I don't know. God has always been, always will be, and is forever. So why couldn't the earth have been forever? But when you go back and say, well, it was here, it was populated, and uh, it had a bunch of monkeys, and, or rather a bunch of slime that crawled out of the water up onto the land and sprouted legs and started walking and then became a monkey and then walked on down the line a while for a new few thousand years and became uh, some sort of a weird looking man uh, and started walking on two feet instead of four and then after another billion years it uh, evolved into men like us, people like us. Uh, uh, scientists would like you to believe that. I believe what the God's word says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. He built it. He put it here. He fixed it, ready to go, all things functional. He tells all about the creation. Uh, seven days, uh, six days he created, the seventh day he rested. He took a glob of nothing, formed a globe, so it was all covered with water and dark. Then he made light, then he did all these things. He planted the trees. Uh, he prepared the soil. Uh, yeah, the soil is made out of decayed rocks. You think God couldn't have prepared the soil too? God built this world functional, ready to go. It had all stages of, what would you call it, uh, decay to make it uh, suitable to raise a crop for people to live on from the barest rock down to the finest soil. God created that. Right there he had it all started and ready to go. You don't plant a garden unless you get the garden soil tilled up, fertilized, cleared, 
irrigated and ready to go, then you plant your seed so you'll have a crop. Well, God did that to this earth. He got it ready. He planted the seed and he started the crops to grow, the weeds and the trees and the uh, flowers and whatever else was here at that time. And uh, then he said, it's ready. Let's put man in it. It's got everything he needs to function. And they created man in his own image. I have not created or descended from a monkey. I am created in the image of God. I am loving God. Uh, I didn't, don't have a bunch of uh, uh, monkeys in my ancestry. Sorry about that. Maybe you have. Uh, if you want to choose it that way, but I don't. God created man, and I am an offspring of God's creation. I am not an offspring of a monkey. And if we start thinking that way, then we can realize that we must be of value in the sight of God. We must be worth something. We must be create something because the uh, I saw a sign one for, <coughs> excuse me, I saw a sign somewhere once said, I, I know I'm important because God didn't build no junk. I know I am valuable in the sight of God because didn't, God didn't build any junk. He built me because he had a purpose for my life. He had a use for me. He had a reason to create. <coughs> I get to talking and my throat gets to rattle. <coughs> Sorry about that. You'll have to put up with it. I have to. Uh, anyway, as we look at that, Genesis says that God created the heavens and the earth, and I believe that. Do you believe that? Do you think it was a big bang theory that it just accidentally happened? Can you look at the stars in their rotation through the earth, planets traveling everywhere, always on a course, it's pre assigned to them, it's all figured out. They don't run into one another, <coughs> not like people on the freeway. They drive through the space at thousands of miles an hour on a pre-designed circuit that God has set for them, and they keep moving in their own circuit, doing their own thing, because they're set up. You gotta watch, it's set up with gears and springs and wheels, and I don't know what else, to keep time, and it really, well, the world is the same way. It's set up just like your watch on this, on a bunch of larger scale. God built it and then he gave us the ability to build a watch. Maybe because he wanted us to understand that uh, the world is not an accident. That it happened because God wanted it to be here. And I heard a preacher on television the other day talking uh, whether he's right or not. You know, the Bible says that uh, in the end uh, it's going to be destroyed by fire. Well, his theory, of course, is that it's not going to be totally destroyed. It's just going to be purged and cleansed and have a new basis and that God's going to rebuild the same old earth. It's going to be new in the fact that it's going to be renewed. Uh, this earth is still going to be here. I don't know if that's true or not. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that God created it in the beginning for us to have a place where we can live and serve Him. <coughs> Unfortunately, Adam and Eve got into the garden of Gethsemane, created by God, formed by Him, made in His image, given the authority to take care of the place and to uh, do everything but uh, eat in the one tree of life of understanding whatever it was 
And all I had to do was obey his commandments. That's the only commandment, the only no no he gave him was that warrant. Not, uh, I don't know. People are strange. Uh, the only thing we want to do is when somebody says no. So, so if you don't do that, then you tell a child, don't touch that stove, it'll burn you. Wham! Ouch, you have burned me. Tell them no. That's us. That's our theory. Don't tell us we can't do something. God says you are not to eat of that fruit. Because if you do, you'll die. That what God's law says, ah, you won't die. God's good to you. He just don't want you to be smart like he is. So all says, that's good for him. So the way he did it. So they did. And God cast them out of the Garden of Eden. And sin came in to the world. Sin is in the world today. It's been in the world ever since the, uh, Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Because sin is disobedience to God. <coughs> we have a lot of people that are disobeying God today. We have a lot of Christians that are disobeying God today. They're not listening to His Word. They're listening to the world. They're living like the world. They're not living according to God's will. We're looking at a lot of things that are happening today in our world. A lot of trials. And I pray God's uh, putting them on them. So let's see what uh, Paul says in the Romans, the first chapter. Way over here in Romans, the first chapter. <coughs> he says in verse 16 and 17, Says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed for faith and faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. If you don't believe, That first verse in the Bible that God created the heavens and the earth, then you don't have faith. You don't believe God. You don't really believe the Bible. You have to accept that as a basis for your foundation for your uh, belief. Because if God didn't create the heavens and the earth, that Jesus is not the Son of God, Jesus is not the Savior, Jesus didn't rise from the dead. Jesus is not coming back after his church one day. There is no hope for you. Uh, something's going to happen and blow the whole place up anyway, pretty soon. And where we go? And all of the labors that we have labored have been in vain. All of the things that we have done have been without cause. If we don't have the faith to believe that God is God and God is able to meet our needs. I believe Jesus. I believe what he said. <coughs> he said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. I believe that he is the Savior of the world. I believe that he is the one that can give you everlasting life. I believe that without him you're going to perish. I believe that God is in control of all of these things that are happening. God allows them to happen. God allows us to blow ourselves up. God allows us to perish if we choose to. God allows us to make our own choices of what we will do with His Word. We can believe it or we can reject it. God says, that doesn't change me. I'm still God. You can believe whatever you want to. It doesn't make me any difference. And he does in a way. He doesn't want us to perish. But he says, it's not going to change me. It's not going to do away with God just because you don't believe. 
just because you don't want to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. Just because you want to believe that you are able to save yourself. If you can save yourself, how come so many rich and powerful people are dead today? And buried and gone, forgotten. Well, not maybe not completely forgotten, but nearly. And how many doctors are there that uh, try to that die because they can't cure themselves? How are they going to keep us alive forever? We are going to perish one day in the flesh. But God has promised us life everlasting through faith in Jesus Christ. So he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed to believe in Jesus. I'm not ashamed to proclaim him to you. I believe that Jesus is the power of God for salvation. I believe that he will give us everlasting life. I believe that my hope of eternity is in him. I'm trusting in him. And I am not worried about the future. Finally, maybe finally. Oh, let's look at the John 5th chapter, I guess. John chapter 5, verse 24. <clears throat> Verse 24 says, Verily, verily, I say to you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. He says, Whoever hears my word, believe. And you see, you have to believe. You have to understand that what God said is really true, and what Jesus said is fact. He's not lying to you. He's telling you the truth. And if you would believe on Him, you have everlasting life. Everlasting life. It's something that's going to go on and on forever. And then we go on over into John 11. And I'll shut up here. Verse 21 says, Then said Jesus, Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. <coughs> you know, Lazarus was dead and buried, and Jesus <coughs> wasn't there. He came along later. And Martha says, If he had been here, he wouldn't have died. She had faith that Jesus could have kept her brother alive. Her faith was limited. She said, if you had been here, you could have healed him, you could have kept him alive. Uh, but she'd already given up hope now, he's already dead, it's too late. Nothing Jesus could do now. But he says, but I know that even now, whatsoever I will ask of God, God will give it to me. So maybe her faith wasn't so weak. Maybe she did believe that Jesus was able. And said, Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. He's going to rise again. And yet we see what her faith says. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again at the resurrection at the last day. Said, I know he's going to rise again. I know there's a resurrection. I know that there's life beyond the grave. I know that he's going to live again. But she didn't really believe he was going to be raised right then. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. And the life he that believeth on me, though we here, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection. I'm the one that can raise him up. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. 
Believest thou this? Believe this. Don't doubt it. Believe it. That whosoever lives and believes in Jesus shall never die. We have life everlasting through faith in Jesus. Yes, this fleshly body is going to pass away. Yes, this earthly tabernacle that we're living in is going to be destroyed. But we are going to live on eternally either with Jesus in glory or without Him in the total darkness. I don't know where you're about, but I know where I'm going because as Paul says, I know who I have believed. I know who I have believed. I have believed Jesus. I believe that God created the heaven and the earth. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. I believe that Jesus is coming back. And I believe that Jesus has forgiven my sins on the cross of Calvary and has died for me and that I don't have to give an account for it before God that one day I'll stand in His presence in eternity. How about you? Do you know that? Are you sure? Are you certain of your future? Do you believe that God created the heaven and the earth? Or do you think maybe there's something to this big bang theory? Good night. It's a cop out. It's just something they're looking at to try to find a way out. If you don't have Jesus, if you don't believe His Word, you'll perish. Father, we ask that you use this short message for your honor and your glory. I pray, Lord, for this one who is trusting in anything except Christ for the salvation, that they realize that there is no hope beyond Him. That he is the only way. Guide us now, Lord, through this coronavirus deal, this COVID 19. Help us to endure, Lord, and to realize that uh, we need to be drawn closer to you and walk closer to you and uh, be more uh, obedient to your will that we might survive and do a better job. We pray now, Lord, that you would bless. Those of the sound of my voice, I pray, Father, that you'd seek the needs they have in their hearts and in their lives, and that you'd supply those needs. Comfort their hearts, Lord, if they're suffering. Heal those that are sick, Lord. Lift up those that are downhearted. For I ask it all in the name of Jesus, my Savior. Amen.